Hello, this is uh, Roy Khan of Conception, and you're listening to Heavy Talk. E aí pessoal, John aqui, com uma entrevista muito especial com a lenda Roy Khan. Antes de começar a entrevista, um breve contexto. O Conception voltou ao ativa em 2018 e por consequência também marcava a volta do Roy aos holofotes desde a sua saída do Camelot em 2011. No ano passado entrevistei o Roy para o canal que eu trabalho aqui na Finlândia, o Chaosine, que você pode conferir aqui no card. E lá falamos mais sobre a sua volta, passado e presente. No ano passado fui convidado a trabalhar com o Conception, editando dois videoclipes oficiais para Quiet Alright e Monument and Time, que você também pode conferir aqui do lado. Em março desse ano a banda se apresentou na Noruega e a convite deles eu fui prestigiar o show e também conhecer o Roy pessoalmente. Aproveitei a visita para fazer uma nova entrevista, dessa vez exclusivamente aqui para o Heavy Talk. Como já era minha segunda entrevista com ele, resolvi focar em algumas curiosidades para tentar entender os pensamentos e sentimentos que transformaram ele nesse artista tão único e adorado por tantas pessoas. Espero que gostem. Com vocês, Roy Khan. Hi Roy, thank you for having us here in Norway. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for asking. <laughs> Conception just released a video for a Monument in Time that shows a little bit of your evolution playing live, and you have always been known for a very strong and unique presence. How was this process of finding your own body language over the years? Uh, you know that whole thing is a little bit of a mystery because I, I don't really I don't really do anything uh, deliberately when I'm like moving around on stage. It's like it's not like that's deliberate in any any way. I just walk out there and I just try to you know disappear into the song. You know what the song is about, the the mood of the song, the the the, the music, everything, the words, and um, you know whatever comes out comes out. It's also a matter of of my state of mind that particular day, right? So, so I mean, you got bad days and you got uh, good days, and and uh, you know, surroundings are gonna um, um, affect my performance, you know. And and uh, but uh, generally, I don't really think too much about what I do. So I can't really tell what what, what I think. Think trying to just you know be in the song and 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 tell a story. And that that's that's uh, the best tip I have. And then let your body do whatever, <laughs> whatever you feel like doing. Another visual factor in your own style were the costumes representing each moment of your career. Costumes in the flow days were even handmade by you, for example. And nowadays, Conception has its own live visual identity. Was it something that always got your attention in other artists? Clothing, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know, um, um, I was a huge fan of um, of Queen Strike, right, uh, back in the 80s, and and I discovered them on Rage for Order. Now, uh, um, the music itself was 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 stellar, so that was a that was a no-brainer. That was definitely part of why I got hooked onto Queen Strike, and of course Jeff Tate and the vocals and the lyrics really, really, uh, you know, for the first time in that genre, I heard lyrics that I really felt were you know thought provoking and 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 uh i i can't even say i understood everything they they said but it, it was something about the way they constructed their lyrics that that attracted me um but also you know i remember that that the the the, the, the clothing style and the hairstyle on, on, on each member on that record that particular record it's pretty crazy so so at that time you know they they they, they stood out even you know uh, um outfit wise uh so f I think maybe f already back then I I at least you know unconsciously were were um fascinated by you know how people dress and how that sort of you know makes the character you know so to speak Until today your fan base is huge in Brazil and everyone expects a new visit since your return this time with conception Going back in time a bit you have already been there once 2005 on the Black Halo tour What are the memories of that visit? The one in Brazil. Yes. Okay, I, uh, I have to, uh, I have to uh, tell you about this one time that 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 because uh, that's the only time it ever happened. So you know, uh, I can I can uh, reveal it now. Like when we played in uh, Rio, um, we, we already had uh, done this gig in Sao Paulo. Uh, 5,000 people, great gig, and, and you know, everybody was happy. But during the next night, I, I um, had some sort of virus from, from a, a cold. And anyways, I lost my voice, really lost my voice. Like you could lose your voice in the sense that, you know, you, 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 you 
to talk raspy and you 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 know uh, but I really literally lost my voice it was gone and uh, there were a doctor uh, uh, that came in and, and gave me some shots like cortisone shots tried all kinds of medicine but nothing helped so um, like three four hours before the gig uh, Casey, our drummer, came up with a brilliant idea that that we, hey, uh, we recorded the show in Tokyo. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna like go through this whole thing and and weed out all the in between talking and and we'll just you know we'll just you know you'll sit you you you'll, you'll we'll play that along with the uh, with the band and and you you know we'll give you lights from behind and lots of fog fog and and uh, so so that's what I did. I, I went out there and I lip-synced myself <laughs> singing in Tokyo. <laughs> uh, and it went great, you know, it went great. But uh, uh, up to the point where I was like standing with my arms like this, like, and I, I was, sh uh, and uh, there was like this one spot where, where Casey hadn't been able to, you know, cut the, the in-betweens out. And I was shouting, hey, let me fucking hear you, Tokyo. And I was out there. Right with the mic, so so, and then I saw a couple of guys going, oh, well, that was kind of weird. So, but uh, that's the only time that, but that, that 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 was the only way we could, you know, do the show, and and uh, I guess we gave them something that was better than canceling at least. Your departure from Camelot came at a time when social media and smartphones were not normal. Nowadays, the way we communicate has changed. How do you feel when you meet fans these days? Is there a big difference? and in how you receive their affection compared to 13 years ago? I mean, one thing that is totally different is like playing gigs and you see a lot of like phones up in the air, uh, uh, which I understand it. I mean, I haven't done it myself at, at gigs that I've been at, but uh, I think it's important to remember to be in the moment and be there, you know, while while, while the thing is happening. Uh, that's important. I think if you hold the, hold the screen up, uh, at least if you look at the screen, you know, you're not really capturing that unique moment that is happening just right there and then. But uh, yeah, we're getting used to it though. <laughs> when in Camelot, you didn't sing Conception material, and now in Conception, you don't have Camelot songs in the set list. As a father of so many children, do you miss singing songs that mean a lot to you? Do you sometimes sing alone at home, or is it normal to put these songs in a drawer and focus only on the now? Yeah, interesting question. Well, you know, what, what, when I'm out with Conception, it's not really, it's not like we could not have done a Camelot song and what, vice versa. We actually did a Conception song on the very first couple of gigs that I did with Camelot. Uh, we played Hand on Heart, the Japanese bonus track. Uh, but that was like only the really, really uh, very beginning of the band, with me anyways. Uh, no, but um, I mean, it's not. Uh, both both bands have so many good songs that it's kind of easy to. We have more than we have trouble enough, you know, choosing the the, the songs that we need for a, for a uh, regular set. So uh, it's not like I. I mean, I love all these songs, but you know, I, I'll, I can easily manage to do a gig, you know, without missing, you know, any songs. You have already mentioned that you can spend days working on the lyrics of a song, and there's a lot of poetry and meaning in your text, from tributes to your father, to statements about your philosophy and beliefs. As an artist, do you feel that writing about your feelings is also a way of living a legacy of your life? I mean, I'm not sure how deliberately I go about that whole process either, the process of writing lyrics. But, um, you know, <clears throat> I've said this before too, like, like very often I jam out things with, with the band or, you know, over a tape. And, uh, uh, you know, when you do that, there's always like certain words that, that, that just, you know, they either sound like something or they, they are actual, actual, you know, English words, sometimes full sentences and you sort of try to pick the ones that, that, that give you something and then you try to build on that whether it's a word or a full sentence. And, and slowly the song becomes meaningful somehow, more and more. Uh, and and it's, it's quite often that I don't really have a theme as such, you know, when I start writing the lyrics, very often it starts with just, you know, words and sentences coming from, from jamming stuff out. 
It is hard for anyone who doesn't know or didn't grow up in the Nordic countries to understand that melancholy is more intense here and consequently reflected in the music. Is it a natural or even therapeutic process for you to use that darkness and turn it into art? Like you said, though, uh, uh, it, it struck me before that that so many bands from from you know the northern region, they have they have this uh, melancholy in their in their writing is very common i mean a lot of other genres and, and and music too of course but um there's a certain melancholy that that seems to be more easily achieved you know uh up here and i'm sure the climate has something to do with that i mean that's one clear difference yeah again I, I, you know i i you know when i write songs when i perform them is is all is all uh i'm sure it has a, a, an effect on my on my you know on my mental being, let's put it that way. I mean, it must have it's such a big part of my life, and and the the emotions that you uh, that you feel and that you um, expose are so they're quite you know quite quite grand grand feelings. So so I'm sure you know it affects it affects you somehow. But again, not not in a conscious way. No. And speaking of making music, your career has two great partnerships with two incredible songwriters, Thomas in Camelot and Twitter in Conception. What do you think you learned from each one that made you a better musician? Oh, that's hard. I learned a lot from 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 both of them. One thing about Thomas was was he, he was very patient. Like you know, he he would uh, he would work hard, re really hard working guy. And uh, but he's he'd also be. Uh, he wouldn't stress things like he 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 would always do things right, uh, uh, and and uh, we took our time with with things to make them right, which we also do in in, in conception. But we just knew that we uh, have, Thomas was very certain that that you know things would you know if we just built things slowly, it it, it would it would uh, go well in the end, and and you know that that was a smart way to build the band like slowly like that. From Toro, I mean, lots of things, but I, it, it's really hard to pick out, you know, one single thing that you've learned from from a from a person that you've been working so long and and intense with. But both, that goes with both Thomas and, and Toro. Uh, so you know, musically speaking, I've learned a lot from both of them. You are one of the few artists that it is called Voice of God by some fans and many times this adoration can be very intense and not positive for an artist. How have you dealt with this in the past and how do you deal with your ego to not be affected? Does staying away from social media help? Yeah, yeah, well I'm definitely not, you know, reading every damn comment, you know, on, on every, you know, little thing that we do on the internet that would be exhausting. But um. Uh, and and you know when people say that that you know you know say those things about me and my singing and my voice that that's I'm I'm, I'm still not I still appreciate you know uh, getting uh, um, a compliment so but uh, and that's what it is so but um, no I I, th I think I'm way more grounded than I was uh, back in the day so I'm not really too afraid of that. And besides working with Conception's return, you've been making special appearances again, something that hasn't happened since the one with Avantasia in 2008. Since then, you have collaborated with Seven Spires, World of Damage, Star One, and Entering Polaris. What attracts you to participate in a project? Uh, well, I mean, the one thing was I had, I had quite a bit of time uh, um, during the pandemic. I, I do get a lot of these requests like all the time, three last week. I, I just have to say no to most of them, but you know, uh, uh, if I'm in a period where I have plenty of time, and I, you know, like the, I, I have to like the artist or the or the music, you know, somehow. Uh, but even sometimes when I really like something, I have to, you know, decline and and and, and tell them that sorry, but you know, at, at this moment, I can't really, can't really help you. And what are your plans for this year? Uh, well, now we're um, on this tour. Started yesterday, or the the that was the kickoff for the tour. So we're um, doing these uh, these shows, uh, ending in Lisbon on the 28th of April, 29th. Um, and after that, we're planning on 
going back in the, the studio or, or the, the demo part of the whole process and look at some some ideas that we already have. Uh, probably Tor and myself are going to uh, try to uh, uh, put down some new songs, look at, you know, new mu music. Um, and I mean, we're, we're, we're in a, as far as playing live goes, we will, you know, if there is something that that's interesting that that pops up you know we're gonna do but we're not gonna do another tour until at least not until next year so but there will be and there's gonna be a, a summer camp like a fan camp that we do annually in uh, in September I think that is um, I think it's gonna take place in uh, a different country this time I think we're going to Sweden instead of Norway but um We'll get to uh, the details about that. Um, yeah, no. Apart from that, you know, we're we're um, we're gonna a lot of business stuff. Of course, that that's when you do your own thing. You know, there's there's always stuff to you know keep yourself busy with. Right. Did you enjoy the interview? Would you like to leave a final message? It was a excellent interview, and uh, no, I'm I'm uh, uh, really looking forward to you know get out there and play, and uh, I would love to come to Brazil and play. Uh, that would be, hey, that's, that, this is not intentional. I have, that, <laughs> that's the only t-shirt I brought. Yeah. Okay, cool. Looking forward to, um, see everybody out there playing live. Uh, hope a lot of people, you know, check into our deluxe box and, uh, and the deluxe version of the CD, State of Deception. And, uh, yeah, take care. Love each other. See ya. Essa foi a nossa entrevista com Roy Khan. Infelizmente ele está muito bem e motivado, como vocês puderam ver. Sem falar que é um cara muito bem humorado e fala com muita lucidez sobre diferentes temas. Eu particularmente me sinto muito realizado de estar trabalhando com o Conception nos últimos tempos, pois como já tive a chance de mencionar para o Roy, ele é uma das minhas maiores influências artísticas e conhecendo-o pessoalmente também pude comprovar que ele é um cara que trabalha muito para chegar nesse nível que ele é conhecido mundialmente. E falando em trabalho, essa entrevista deu um trabalho gigante para ser concluída. E o Have Talk é um canal que só existe pela ajuda financeira dos membros que acompanham e prestigiam esse canal. Então caso você queira saber como você consegue ajudar esse canal e se tornar um apoiador, clica no link aqui embaixo que vai ter diferentes opções de planos que cabem de acordo com o seu orçamento. E dependendo do seu plano você terá acesso a conteúdos exclusivos, como shows na íntegra, prioridade na interação, e também em vídeos de bastidores. O nosso muito obrigado a todos que prestigiam e já apoiam esse canal há muito tempo. Sem vocês nada disso seria possível hoje em dia. E eu espero que tenham gostado desse bate-papo. Foi incrível ter realizado mais uma conversa com o Roy. E também espero que assistam os vídeos que eu editei para o Conception. Me senti muito feliz com esse convite. E eu espero que eles também consigam chegar em mais pessoas. Pois a música da banda é incrível. E antes de ir embora, assista um trecho da cobertura do show na Noruega, caso queira assistir o vídeo completo, mais um link aqui no card. E eu espero que vocês fiquem bem, se cuidem, força sempre, um grande abraço, até a próxima e tchau, amigão! Tchau!